Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today I'm going to go straight to the point. And my point is that you should use your racket more like a weight and not like a tool. That's why I'm sitting here, because I've put here a few tools that we use in every day. So they're like scissors, knife, fork, bottle opener, pen, phone. So whenever we use these tools, let's call them tools, our goal is to be very precise. So if I'm eating, I want to be very precise with what I'm doing. If I'm opening a bottle, even if I stand up, I cannot move my body much, so I have to be precise. If I'm writing, I want to be very precise. If I'm doing something on the phone, I want to be precise. It's very difficult to be precise, to do something if my body is moving. So what happens is that instinctively when we grab something, we think it's a tool. Now when we use tools, we are precise and we use hands and arms, but we don't use the body. So again, if I'm writing something, let's say I want to write something on the wall here, I will be very still with my body so that I can be precise. Now, can you see where I'm going with this? What happens if you grab a racket and you think that the racket is a tool? Then you're going to use it only with your arm. You will not move your body because you are used to using tools in a very precise manner using only your hands or maybe your arms. And so you're going to be playing the ball with the racket like you're using a tool. On the other hand, if you take something heavier like this backpack and you want to use it as a tool, you will find it very difficult because it's heavy. So what will we naturally do if you want to move a backpack or something similar is that I'm going to swing it. I'm going to feel that I can move it much easier when I swing it. So if I want to swing it, I'm going to use my body. So my arm is quite passive now and I'm using body rotation and weight transfer to get this backpack going. So what I'm suggesting is that you treat your racket as a weight and not as a tool. Because if you treat it as a weight, then you're going to be using your body and you're going to be swinging the racket and using your body and your arm much more efficiently to generate force then if you just think a racket is a tool with which you want to hit the ball and you, then you won't use your body, you will just use your arm and tennis will be quite difficult sport to play. So why do players use their rackets like a tool and not like a weight? I think there are several reasons. The first one I already mentioned, I think it's kind of instinctive because we use our hands so much in our life and when we use our hands with tools, we are very precise. And so the body shuts off in order to enable us, to allow us to be precise. We cannot be precise with our hands if the body is moving. So we are used to kind of steadying the body, making the body very still, and then we just use the hand. And so it's just kind of instinctive thing, I think, that happens. So when you grab your racket, you want to be still because you're just running the same program which is this is a tool the second reason is i think that people start to play tennis too fast too quickly which means they don't rally nicely and work on developing the whole body coordination and all the tennis fundamentals but they take a few lessons and then they join a league or they start to play tournaments or they play points with their friends and tennis becomes quite difficult you are just scrambling around the court, trying to improvise, trying to solve the situation in any way that you can. So now imagine your brain trying to solve this problem of moving your body with hundreds of bones and over 600 muscles while you have about a second and a half of time, which is the time that the ball takes from baseline to baseline roughly in a recreational good rally. And so you have maybe a good second of time to position yourself and execute your stroke while coordinating hundreds of bones and hundreds of muscles. 
And your brain cannot do it. It cannot do it immediately in this short amount of time. So what the brain does is the brain simplifies and it takes away many body parts. It doesn't want to use them because it cannot coordinate them. So what the brain does is the brain says, oh, with this movement, I can hit the ball. This is too much for a beginner or intermediate to incorporate in one and a half seconds while playing a match, keeping score, not wanting to lose, not wanting to get embarrassed, and so on. And so that's what happens is that the brain simplifies the stroke into very simple, short, jerky movements without the whole body coordinating the whole body, helping out with the stroke. If you have a lot of time, if you practice hitting tennis nice and slow, with no pressure, no competition, then your brain will eventually figure out, when it has more time, how to engage more body parts. And when you engage more body parts, the stroke becomes more efficient, more effortless, and you gain more control of the stroke. And so I think that's one of the main reasons, in my opinion, why so many players do not have good body rotation, hip rotation, shoulder rotation, weight transfer, but they are just chopping and hacking and bumping the ball without any fluidity and any smoothness. You are just playing a tennis at a level that is too high for you at the moment to be able to execute the stroke correctly. So you need to slow down, you must not play points. You need to just rally and work on trying to engage your whole body into the stroke. Because only when you engage your body into a stroke, you're going to start to use the racket like a weight and not like a tool. So if I use a weight again with my backpack, you can see that I'm swinging my backpack with the help of my body. So, of course, I can swing it just with my arm, but that's very straining. I can feel it's not natural. I can feel it's very easy to do it like this. Very easy, also on backhand side, see? I play one-handed backhand or if I play two-handed backhand I'm using my backpack as a weight it's heavy and I feel how to use it when I'm using it like that my arm is relieved of work it doesn't take much work to just hold this backhand and backpack and swing it so I'm using my body rotation I'm turning my hips I'm turning my shoulders I'm transferring weight you can see I'm transferring weight back foot front foot so I'm using my body weight transfer body rotation to move this backpack and so if I use my body in the same way when I hit my ground strokes and especially serves then I'm using my racket like a weight so that's when a correct technique and correct stroke can happen when I'm using the racket like a weight See, one-handed backhand, like a weight. It's a weight and I swing it. Another reason why players use the racket like a tool and not like a weight is because they want so much control and that's because you play points too much so you cannot afford to miss you know that every mistake is a point for your opponent and so you are just concerned with control and not losing points and you feel that you get the most control when you just move the racket a little bit you chop you hack you push and you feel oh I have good control of the ball if I swing my racket like this who knows what will happen so yes, at first you will not know what will happen, but in time, if you develop this 
technique, this movement, you will realize that you have much better ball control and yet you can play it at much higher pace and much better accuracy than if you're just chopping like this. It's a, it's a feeling of control, but it's not actual good control of the ball. But of course, you cannot afford to experiment and practice when you play points. You can only do that if you rally with a friend or you have a ball machine or you hit against the wall. And then you can experiment and let go a little bit so that you feel that sometimes you might lose control over the ball. Another reason that might be possible why you're not doing it, it is because you are so obsessed with hitting the ball in the court rather than being obsessed with developing correct tennis technique and playing like you're supposed to play. And so you must afford to miss some balls and not be so negative for every single ball that you miss. When I have lessons with players of all ages, I always see a negative reaction on their face whatever ball they miss in whatever part of the lesson, whether they're beginners or intermediates, they don't like missing a ball. And this mindset will not work for you in tennis because there is no way you can develop more advanced techniques without hitting the balls sometimes too long, sometimes with too much power, sometimes too high and so on. Because you are trying to incorporate a swing and body rotation and weight transfer and so on into the stroke and your brain needs to figure out how to put this, all this together in one second. And that's a very difficult task, so you have to give your brain some time, give it some patience and allow yourself to go through this feedback loop of hitting, looking at the ball, hitting again, adjusting, oh, this ball is too long, oh, this ball is too low and so on. So you are simply receiving feedback rather than always blaming and judging yourself for not being good enough or my forehand sucks or something like that. And then you're in an emotional state and you don't really un see or understand what's going on. And so, again, as I've said many times, try not to be so negative and, and judgmental on every ball that you hit, especially in practice sessions. Practice sessions are for you to experiment, to develop something new, to try and reach a new level, and not to try and hit the ball in the court every single time. There's yet another reason why I think players use the racket like a tool and not like a weight. And that's because that modern rackets are too light. They are so light that you're, if you're a little bit stronger, you can basically move it like this and use it like a tool. It's just too light. And so you can easily overpower racket's weight. And when you do that, you don't feel the weight. So in order to feel your racket like a weight, and it's, if it's just 300 grams or something like that, you have to hold the racket very nice. Only when you hold the racket nice, so not with a death grip, then you can feel that it has some weight. So especially in the racket head, you feel, oh, my racket head has a weight. So when you feel that your racket has a weight, then you can think, oh, I'm going to swing this weight against the ball. Let me swing the weight of the racket against the ball and you will find out that the ball flies off effortlessly. Again, you must be willing to miss some balls, to experiment, to try and see, and again, not judge every ball and be concerned with every single ball in your life that must go in. So similar on the back end, I can try and feel, oh, this is a weight, that's why I want to lift the weight here so I get some gravity acceleration, some momentum. If I put the racket here, for example, I have no gravity momentum. I don't feel a weight. So on ground strokes especially, you want to feel the weight. And the stroke where you need to feel the weight the most is the serve, of course. So when I look at the players, when I'm evaluating the serve, I can tell whether they know how to serve or not before they do a backswing. How do I know that? I can see how they hold the racket. Do they hold the racket like a tool? Or do they hold the racket like a weight? 
And I can tell that. This is holding the racket like a weight because my wrist is very relaxed and as soon as I release the racket here, it's going to drop. So the player is using the racket like a weight when they're like this, when their wrist is very loose. And when they initiate like this, downwards. So they are using gravity. So they feel, oh, I'm going to swing this weight and then I'm going to swing this weight. And if I see the player doing like this and grabbing the racket and changing their grip all the time and settling and I can see muscles like this, I don't need to see the whole serve. I already know that they cannot serve properly. They don't use the racket like a weight. They use it like a tool. So what will they do? They're going to lift the racket up and hit the ball. So now that you're looking at me, you can see, ah, oh, <laughs> this resembles some people that I know that how they serve. Yeah, because they, they're doing like this. They don't feel the racket like a weight because they want complete control over the racket. Because they want complete control over every single ball that they hit in their life. And because they play points all the time and they cannot afford to miss, they cannot afford to experiment. And so, that is the key for the serve, that you understand that you're going to swing this weight. You're going to swing this weight this way and then this way. So, serve are just two swings. If we look from the standpoint of racket movement and, and momentum, so I'm swinging this way, then I'm swinging this way. Instead of trying to follow certain technical procedures or checkpoints this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. So you don't really understand what you're doing. So if I cannot tell immediately how the player uses the racket, I can tell in the backswing, that's the latest, I can tell. Are they swinging the racket? Are they using it like a weight? So I can tell by here. Or are they going up, for example? If they're going up, they're definitely not using the racket like a weight. They're using it like a tool because they overpowered the weight of the racket. So they just went up. So they're overpowering the weight. They can move the racket however they want. And then they wonder why they don't have power on the, on the ball. And that's because, for some strange reason, you can ask a physicist or a, someone in biomechanics, we get much more power when we swing than when we push. Because when you hold the racket and use it like a tool, you're going to be pushing the ball. You're going to be forcefully pushing it. When you use it like a weight, you're going to be swinging it and accelerating it through the ball and the ball will just go. The exceptions on these are volleys. So on the volleys we don't use racket like a weight. That is sometimes a problem when players swing then they're using racket like a weight. On the volleys we do want to use racket much more like a tool. So we are doing short compact movements and we control the racket path. So we are not swinging. Also on slices, so let's say on backhand slice or even on a forehand slice, I am not really swinging, I'm not using the racket like a weight, I'm more using it like a tool. So yes, I do use a little bit of weight, I use a bit of momentum, I let go, but for a ground stroke we hit with topspin, for example, on a backhand, it's much more weight-based stroke, so I'm much more swinging and letting go than when I'm hitting a slice, for example. So just to summarize a little bit, when we hit serves, we want to use the racket the most as a weight and the least as a tool. Ground strokes on normal rallies are very much weight-based. I'm using my racket like a weight. So let's say about 70-80% of the swing, I am swinging, I'm using momentum, so I'm rotating, I'm turning my body, and about 20% I'm controlling the racket's path. So back and same, I want to swing it on a normal rally. Of course, if I'm in trouble and I have to do this, then this is all me, I'm not swinging. On volleys, it's mostly more like tool way of doing things. And on slice, it's still leaning much more towards controlling the racket rather than swinging. So on slice, you don't want to swing like this or like this. You are much more controlled 
with your movements, so it's not so much based on weight. So while this video took a while to explain the background and the reasons behind these concepts of weight against the tool, the final message that I want to give you, or the idea, is basically very simple. Are you using your racket like a tool or like a weight? Hold your racket, grab your racket, observe yourself when you play tennis, and try to think, did I hit this forehand using my racket like a tool, or did I use it like a weight? Did I swing a weight somehow, at least partially? Did I partially swing like a weight, did I engage my body in the same way as you would engage your body when you swing a backpack? And again, I highly recommend you just grab something, a backpack or a bag, and just swing it like this, just next to you, just swing it back and forth for three minutes, and try to think, am I using my body in the same way when I'm playing tennis? Or is my body very stiff and still and rigid when I'm hitting the strokes? So when you become aware of this, then you know how to correct it. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe and keep in touch.